Okay, have you ever imagined paying more than $200,000 for a robot girlfriend? Ah, it sounds like something out of a movie, right? Totally. Science fiction. But that's just one of the things we're going to explore today. Get ready uh, for an immersion into realities that honestly delivered the uh, unbelievable. And the most interesting thing is how this idea, which seems so absurd, at first glance connects with much broader trends that are already shaping our present. That's right. We're going to dive into three themes that apparently have nothing to do with each other. Robots, companions. That are already a reality, as surreal as it may seem. Exactly. State-of-the-art humanoid robots in the industry. Completely transforming the way we work and interact with machines. And to finish, just to add that touch of suspense. Billionaires preparing for the end of the world. Or at least for the end of the world as they know it. What a mystery, right? What do they know that we don't? Exactly. So our mission today is to unravel these mysteries. We're going to connect the dots, analyze the information, and, who knows, discover some surprising truths. Like, Mama, what's the logic of spending a fortune on a robot girlfriend? What need does that fulfill? Good question. And the answer might surprise you. Loneliness, my friend, loneliness. And that loneliness has turned into a billion dollar market. And there's a guy who's been in this market since the very beginning, Matt McMullen. Ah, uh, yes, the guy with the thousand dollars. That's him. His story is fascinating. He started in the 90s making super realistic mannequins for the fashion industry. And the brilliant insight was realizing that there were people wanting these mannequins for other purposes. And we saw that the demand went beyond the shop windows, right? For sure. And then the real gals were born, which were an absolute success. And then, with technology evolving, what was the next step for the life of those dolls? Exactly, it was inevitable. Integrating artificial intelligence. And Jimmy McMullen was there at the forefront. In 2017, long before chatbots became a craze, he launched Real Batiks. Robots that not only looked human but also talked. And they talked well. Way ahead of its time. And it didn't stop there, right? The latest models are jaw-dropping, 17 motors just in the robot's face. Wow, why all that? To give more realism, the robot can express various emotions. Joy, sadness, surprise. Wow, so the interaction becomes much more natural, right? Imagine, you're there, talking to a robot, it responds with facial expressions. Almost like a human. Almost. But there's still a... That is artificial, right? Of course, we know it's a robot. But that's exactly Macmillan's intention. To offer companionship in an increasingly lonely world. It's connected. Yes. People feel lonely even when surrounded by others. It's the loneliness of the digital age. And then I ask you, could you have a robot companion? That's hard to say. It's a lot to process. It even sounds like a movie script, right? Look at that Blade Runner 2049. Movies that explore this complex relationship between humans and machines. And we start to question what defines companionship, what is intimacy? Yeah. Are we heading towards a future where real relationships be replaced by artificial interactions? Exactly. And the craziest part is that these robots are programmed to learn these preferences. Yeah. Like, the more you interact with it, the more it adapts to you. And the more personalized the experience becomes. It's time to integrate these robots with Alexa or Google Assistant. Totally, we've already gotten used to talking to machines. If the machine starts having feelings, things get complicated, quite complicated. And the price, the robotic one costs about $20,000, the full model. Tell me it's not what I'm thinking. More than $200,000, the price of an apartment. Yeah, and there are people buying it. There's a market for this. Yes, it's bizarre but it shows that loneliness is a real risk, real problem. It's profitable, but let's change the subject, thankfully. I need to digest all of this. Humanoid robots. Ah, like those that do repetitive work in factories. Forget that image. The bald one, the Kaleido 8.0 is a different story. And what does it do differently? It collaborates, works together with humans. Seriously, there was a demonstration, the Kaleido 8.0 and a human moving a table together. It's simple, but it's super complex. The robot needs to have precision and synchronization. So it doesn't drop the table, right? Exactly. And it has four sensors in its feet. Right here. To sense any change in the center of gravity, adjust the balance in... Wow. It's like it has a sense of touch. Yes. And this adaptability is essential for working in dynamic environments. Where things change all the time. And there's more. Force sensors in the elbows, too. Wow. For what? To detect external forces and react with more precision. And to avoid accidents with humans, right? Exactly. Safety first. And the robot's head. What's with the head? None of that metal structure. Now it's a spherical monitor. How fancy. It can display images, videos, dumb, text, even facial expressions. Imagine that. The robot asks a question then. It frowns like, did you get it? It's crazy. Makes communication easier, right? Undoubtedly. We communicate a lot with facial expressions. 
And the Kalita 1.0 also learned how to fall. What do you mean? You fall and it gets up by itself. How practical. And useful, right? Imagine it working in a place. Dangerous. Or unstable. And it falls. Then it gets up and continues working. Awesome. And for high-risk jobs, they are developing a teleoperation system. Remote control. A human controls the robot from a distance. You need toxic environments, for example. Without putting humans at risk. And there's the idea of the hybrid model. The robot does the repetitive tasks. And humans supervise the complex tasks. Makes sense. Each in their area of expertise. The robot is not going to replace humans. At least not for now. And the Kaleido 8.0 is also helping to train errors. The data collected during the robot's operation is used to improve the algorithms. Exactly. And who knows, one day, it will work autonomously. Without needing humans for anything. Kawasaki is investing in sensors and algorithms. The robot understood the environment better and recognizing objects, making decisions. The applications are endless. Industry, healthcare, rescues. Does one robot do everything? They even created another robot, the Vega. What's special about it? Modular design arms, super precise, a base that moves in all directions. Adjustable heights, a new battery, lasting up to 30 hours. Wow, a robotic Swiss army knife. We have one, however. This, all this technology, right? It's expensive? The Kalito costs more than $150,000. There's still no date for its commercial release? Yeah. It's out of our reach. For now, Bibi, I told you there are very rich people. Preparing for the apocalypse, building underground bunkers, stockpiling supplies. How scary. What do they know? We wonder, right? Do they have insider information about a catastrophe or even potentially a war or possibly a global collapse? And you, what do you possibly think? And the strangest thing is that sales of survival kits have skyrocketed. Yes, food, water, they talk about them, they talk. Essential items, everything with a shelf life of 30 years or more. Maybe the end of the world has become trendy. And these billionaires aren't joking, right? Bunker, for Mark Zuckerberg. Old nuclear cells transformed into Bridges. Underground communities? With swimming pools, cinemas. Cultivation systems? Yes, everything. It almost seems like science fiction, but it's real. And then we think they might be right. Should we be worried? Or are they exaggerating? Aren't they themselves creating chaos? Some people talk about HARP, that atmospheric research program. That supposedly can control the weather. Storms, gold chariots, gold pig carts. And who benefits from this? The companies that sell. The generators. Yes. Emergency food supplies. German. Urus. And who controls these companies? The billionaires. And we are left. I don't deserve this game. They spread panic and sell more solutions. And governments also have their secret plans. Underground shelters and the rest of the population and technology companies. Investing in food security, space colonization, alternative energy. It seems they already know. What is going to happen? Dark. Buying essential survival kits. Thinking they are preparing. Cesar, maybe. It's all part of the plan. Color. We started talking about girlfriends. Robots. And we ended with a billionaire apocalypse. And the connection. Technology. Human. Relationships. And social stability. All connected. And the question that remains is, what is going to happen? What does the future hold for us? Only time will tell. And us? We should keep seeking answers and preparing for everything. Because the world is an unpredictable place and we need to be ready for anything. Reflect on this until next time.